Hi everyone, and welcome to this chapter of Dart Crash Course. In this chapter, we're going to talk about classes. Let's bring up the terminal window that we usually bring up here to create our um, project. So I'm going to go in here and say Dart create with a template of console, and we're going to call it classes, this project. And then we say code classes like this. There's some preparation that we usually do. Let's just go to the terminal and get rid of it from here. Uh, the first thing we do is to change the zoom level to six. Well, you don't have to do that when you're working uh, at home or from your office or wherever you are. Probably zoom level six is just extreme, but for this course is required almost, I would say. And let's create example one dart in here um, and a main main function. Let's also go to terminal and get our FS watch in here with example one ready to go okay so that's there it's ready so let's start talking about what classes actually are well classes are like blueprints of information they're blueprints of logic and you basically create this logic in one place and then you can reuse this logic in many different other places this blueprint itself like the main logic uh, it is called a class and copies of this logic that you hand out to other people who need uh, are called instances so you have always one class that does something and then you can have many instances of that class okay now these instances usually create copies of this so like for instance let's say that uh, you have a piece of paper and it's a blueprint for for instance a jet engine then uh, a person a contractor comes in and says hey we want to build this jet engine can we buy it from you or can we just get a handout for this and then you make a copy of it okay so you created an instance so this instance if that uh, co contractor or consultant goes and makes some draw more drawings on their instance is not going to affect your blueprint so your blueprint is sitting safe in your office for instance okay now um apart from the fact that we shouldn't be handling jet engine blueprints just this loosely <laughs> but um my point here is that instances when they make changes to instances or the contract or whoever basically took that um, uh, blue uh, sorry the copy of the blueprint makes changes to their copy it won't be reflected on your copy and vice versa so if you change your blueprint uh, then that contractor's um, copy won't be affected only the next copy that you make of your blueprint then will uh, will have your changes in it. Okay, it's the same thing is true in classes. However, sometimes you can create classes in Dart and many other program language where your changes will actually be available immediately to your uh, instances. And this particular example can't really be said about uh, physical handouts of paper because if you make any changes to your paper, the physicality of this process demands that the other copy is also available in your hands so that you can make changes to that copy as well but since we we're talking about the digital world where things well the rules are the physical rules are kind of bent then the instances of your class can actually get your changes almost instant instantaneously so there are some similarities and some differences that can be like explained um, and can't be explained for instance in this case so uh, i think the best uh, best scenario is that we start or the best uh, way to explain all of this is to go through examples and then we can draw some conclusions on where classes are similar to this handout and blueprints example that i gave you and where they're not uh, similar so let's start with example one and in here we're just going to create a blueprint or a class okay so we're we're going to call it person so this is the simplest class that we can create okay and we can then go in here and create an instance of it so this is like a copy so we say uh, person one is a person so person one is now kind of like you made a photo a copy of this uh, person class and handed it out here this person one is kind of like a copy of this okay so let's go ahead and in in this person say we have actually two properties every person should have a name and an age okay so if i say in here final uh, string name and then we create uh, int age in here so we have two properties okay now i have a um fix it uh, in visual studio code where if i press command s in here it automatically creates something called a constructor you see here so i just press command s and this function just appears here now every 
class needs to have a constructor where it has properties. As you saw in here, this class didn't have any properties. Therefore, it just has a default uh, constructor. Now, what is a constructor? A constructor is a special function, usually with the name of the class itself, and which whose job is to create an instance of this person. Now, here we're saying that a person has name and age, but there is no constructor. And you, I just mentioned that a constructor has an is kind of like a special function with the name of the class. So let's just create that. And you can see in here, it's complaining, Dart's complaining that this construct constructor is really not doing its job. And the reason is that the contract of this person class is mentioning that we have to have a name and an age, but the constructor is not not fulfilling this contract. It's not initializing the name and age. Okay. So here when we say we're creating a copy of person, and then we're actually calling this constructor. However, it is not taking care of its uh, contract. So let's go ahead in here and uh, have a look at how we can pass the name and age. So allow the caller in here to pass the name and age. So the easiest way to do that is to go ahead and make these required name parameters. We've already talked about functions in another chapter and required name parameters, so we don't have to explain that. So let's go ahead and put curly brackets in here. And then we say required, okay, required this name and require this age. So this is a shorthand for creating like actually passing strings that get digested by this parameters. So otherwise, you'd have to say string name, and you'd have to say int age. And then in here, you would have to go ahead and say, this name is name. And you would have to say this age is age. Okay, or Actually, you could do this. You saw that we, we were getting some errors because that that is not possible uh, to actually do. But this is a valid. This is a valid uh, Dart syntax. You, you can create a constructor that has required name parameters that kind of shadow your property. Um, param uh, sorry, your property names. You can see name has the same name as name, <laughs> and age has the same name as age. So in here, we're literally saying this name. You can see it's highlighted, is equal to this name. And age is equal to this. But Visual Studio Code or actually our analyzer are saying, hey, why are you doing this? Well, there is a better syntax for this. And if I try to get help from Visual Studio Code, you can see it's telling me to convert it to an initializing formal parameter. And if I accept that, that whole parameter is changed to this. And if I accept the suggestion here, it's then convert it to this. Now it's giving us an error simply because we've wrapped this whole thing inside the curly brackets. If we remove this, these curly brackets, then those suggestions would be accepted. And let's actually sh let me show you how this works. So we have a constructor in here, and we want to pass name and age in here. So let's say foo, and then we say twenty. All right, this is fine. So now, if someone looks at this person foo and twenty without having a look at the class person in here, they'd be like, okay, foo hmm, is probably the name. And 20 is probably the age, but it could be something else. Maybe it's a house number. I have no idea. Without looking at the code for person, the caller to this uh, code won't know what this is. So what we need to do is to turn these into required named parameters. And that's why we have the curly brackets in here. So let's put curly brackets. And then we say required. Okay. We've already talked about these in the functions chapter. Now, all of a sudden, the caller to this function has to provide the name of these parameters. So we say name is foo and age is 20. So from the caller's perspective, this is a lot more readable and understandable. The name's foo and age is 20. All right. So let's actually change this maybe to John. So it's a little more explicit. And then we can say print person one and access those properties. You can see we have access to name and age. So print name and print age. Okay. Let's have a look at the console. Then we can see we get John and 20 printed to the console. So this was just a short introduction to what classes are. We're going to go now and move to the next example. So let's say example two, the dart main function and change our FS watch to example two as well. All right. And let that just live there like this. Okay. Now classes can have different types of constructors. Okay. We've already created a class uh, called person. So let's go to example one, example one, and take this class person that says in here and then bring it in here. Okay. So this is one constructor for this uh, person. Now, what we're going to do is to go ahead and actually change this a little bit and say, 
You know what, actually, before we do this, let's go to example one and also change this constructor to a const constructor because this is a constant. You see, it's just taking some strings and then creating a constant instance of person. So it's actually better to have it as const. And then we go in here and we also change this to const. OK, so it's not final. Now let's go in here and do the same uh, same thing. We can say const, but in this example, what we're going to do, we're going to remove these required name parameters and just have positional parameters in here like this. OK just to see an example. Now, what I want to show in this example is that we can have different constructors for every class. So here is one constructor. Okay, so we can create an instance of our uh, class like this. If you say oops, if you say final uh, or a const foo or me is a uh, person. Okay, and let's change the name to Bob in this case and then have him in one line and then we can say print me name and print me age. All right. So you can see in here we created uh, we have these positional parameters in here and they need to be passed to the class. But what if you want to have another uh, constructor? Let's say that we want a constructor on this person class that always creates a person whose name is foo and is a and has the age of 20. Well, you could easily do that simply by creating a constructor with an initializer list. So here we say, OK, first of all, we know that this constructor is going to return a constant value. We know constructors names always start with the class name. OK, then we write that. Then in this case, we say, well, person has already been taken. So let's create a new name and you'd have to suffix this with the name of your constructor. Let's say that this guy creates foo. OK, then you put parentheses in front of this because this is a function. Otherwise, you'd have to put parentheses before this, but this is not valid uh, syntax. So name of the class, then dot name of your constructor parentheses. OK, and in here you'd have to actually initialize all your uh, final uh, variables. So let's go ahead and put a colon in here. Then we say name is foo and then we say age is 20, just like that. So this is the syntax for a const construct named constructor with an initializer list. OK, so in here then up there, we could go ahead and say const foo is a person dot foo. You see, this is a constructor. OK, and then we can print foo's name and age and have a look at those in the console. We get foo and 20. All right. Now, let's say that we want to create a constructor similar to foo, but this time around it wants to set the name to bar always, but it wants to accept an age as a parameter. How do we do that? Because in here, age is hard code at 20, but we want to actually accept age as a parameter, but hard code the name to bar. So let's go and say, OK, this constructor is called bar and this is the name is bar as well. OK, so how do we do that? Well, constructors are no different from normal functions. They can actually accept uh, parameters. So let's go ahead in here and say, OK, we actually accept the age. So therefore, we remove the age from here. That's as simple as that, you see. So the parameter, sorry, the constructor takes the age as a parameter and sets the name to bar. So let's create an instance of that. There we go. And print the name and age. And you see, as an instructor, I'm, I'm so happy to have GitHub Copilot simply because it understands what I'm trying to do and it helps me write the code. So this part was not that important to write. For me, I could have copy pasted it, but it's also nice to have GitHub Copilot basically finishing it off for me. So you can see we created an instance of person using its bar constructor and we're passing the age of 20 in here. So if you save this name is going to be bar and age is going to be 20. And we have actually a lot of 20. So let's just change this to 30. So we see that our age is actually passing here successfully. All right. Now you can also have a constructor that does something, uh, something more. Let's say that we want to create a constructor that optionally takes a name and optionally takes an age. And if the name or the age or both are provided, then they're going to be placed inside the person instance. Otherwise, the default name is Baz and the default age is 30. OK, so we can go ahead in here and actually create a constructor, let's say const person and then we say other so this is the name of our constructor and then we have some name parameters in here and let's just say string name okay and you can see you can see int a so these are named parameters and they're inside curly brackets and they're not required meaning that you don't have to pass them and therefore since they're not required then they're optional 
Okay, so let's go ahead in here and actually decide what to do. So initialize our list with a colon. And then we say, okay, the name, like this name, basically, but you don't have to type this, we say name is equal to either take this name if it's available, or take the name of Baz. And for age, if the given age is available, take it or take the age of 30. This allows us then to at the call site, go ahead and create an instance of uh, our uh, person like this, we can say Baz is equal to person dot other without passing any parameters. And then we can uh, print the name and age and you can see in here, then we get, uh, let's see, Baz and 30. Okay, and here we got uh, foo, sorry, bar and 30. Uh, actually interesting, foo, let's see, what are we doing in here? Who's doing what? <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that's being printed. Let's actually print some separators so we understand which one is doing what. So separator in here, okay. Let's see if GitHub Copilot understands that, yep. In here, and okay, let's just see the results. So the last example is printing Baz. The previous example was printing bar. That's right. That's really good. Okay, so I was just getting a little bit confused. So, so this constructor is just creating baz and 30. And the reason behind that is that we have these default values. Okay, but you could also go ahead and say, okay, I want to pass, let's say, let's copy this example. All right. And then let's say we create this and we call it john this time around john. And for the name parameter, we're just going to say john. All right, but we're not going to pass the age. So let's just type in here john name and john age. And you can see the name is going to be john, but the age is left as 30. Okay, and then we can also create Jill, for instance, let's say Jill, like this, and the name is Jill. And we're going to go ahead and say print Jill's name and Jill's age. And then we can say age is 40, for instance, okay, like this. And we can have a look at the results, Jill has the age of 40. So this was just another example, basically, of how you can create constructors with different meanings for your classes. So that's good for this example. And we can move on to the next one. Okay, so let's close this file in here. And we create example three, like this main function, like we usually do stop FS watch and then change this to example three, and we get rid of our terminal down there. Okay. Now, what we're going to talk about in this example is subclassing. Subclassing is kind of like inheriting logic from one class to another. So let's say it actually happens, I would say in real life, like my son is very similar looking to me. And that could be like, you could say he has subclassed me. So he has kind of like inherited my properties and my functionality is like, maybe I'm good at something. And perhaps he's also good at the same thing simply because he's inherited my traits as well. And that's kind of like what happens in subclassing in programming as well. You create a class and subclasses of that class will inherit the properties and some of the functionalities that you decide of your main class or your blueprint. So let's have a look at an example in here. We say class and we create a vehicle. We've created a lot of person classes. So let's say in here that we have a, an int property. We say wheel count, okay? And then we will create a constant constructor for this guy. And we say, here's the wheel count. Then we can go ahead and say, okay, uh, we wanna create an instance of this vehicle. Let's say final, uh, sorry. We, uh, we say print, I wonder if we should just create an instance of, you know, let's just say final uh, V is a vehicle with a wheel account of four, and then we're going to print this guy. So let's just say print V. And you'll see now in the terminal, you'll, you'll just get something that says instance of vehicle. What happened in here? Well, if you change this print statement and say um, print V dot two string, you can see it says the same thing. So what print internally is doing is going to your class and it's calling is two string function, but you'd be saying that, hmm, but I don't have a two string function. And the reason behind it, that is a two string is a function that comes from object, I believe, let's see, it's object, you can see in here, it's just difficult to find it, perhaps it's a super class in here, here, I think we're getting close. <laughs> so it is class object. There we go. But we could say in here that, well, looking at our code, we don't see, oops, uh, command Z, I think my finger was on the wrong key. You can see that we're, but we're saying we're a vehicle, we're not an object. 
And the reason that this is happening is that Dart, in Dart, every class is implicitly a subclass of object. So it's as if you said extends object. Okay, so this, if you don't write this, Dart does it for you. Okay, and therefore you're getting a free to string function in here. Okay, so you could say, but wait a minute, this to string is just saying that I'm an instance of vehicle. I don't like that. I want to say something else. How can I implement this function? Then you could say, okay, let's go ahead and say we have a function that returns a string and we call it to string like this. And then in here we say return blah. Okay, now let's just run the application and see what happens. You can see blah is not printed to the console. That's really great. But we're getting a little warning in here saying annotate overwritten members. What's happening in here? Well, this is literally telling us that the object class has created this function already. But in your implementation, you're not saying that you're overwriting this implementation. You're actually just completely overwriting it. Remember, override and overwrite are different <laughs> words. <laughs> okay. So, uh, thankfully, overwrite is something that people usually don't say, but I, I say it sometimes. And uh, pretty much it means overrule. Okay. But override simply means that you have a function uh, in a superclass in this case object, and you are trying to re-implement it. So overriding, it's kind of like re-implementing it, okay? And therefore, in this case, according to Dart's programming language, uh, at like a Dart as a programming language in its contracts and its implementation, then you need to annotate these as override like this. So you're telling Dart that I know that object has this function, but I actually want to create my own implementation, all right? So in here, then you could say, okay, well, my implementation, I want to actually type my runtime type. This is a property of every object. So you can say this runtime runtime type. Okay. And if you just print that, uh, and then you say with wheel count wheels. And if you just see the result for this, then you could see it says vehicle with four wheels. All right. So this runtime type gives you the type of your class. And then you can access your properties as you would in any other string concatenation like this. All right. And then you can say wheels. So four wheels. Good. So this is how you would overwrite a uh, function that comes from your super class. But what if we want to create subclasses of vehicle as well? So we want to create a car and we, we can say every car by default has four wheels. Okay. So let's say class car and we say we extend vehicle. All right. And then we want to create a constant constructor for our car. So let's say const car like this. But in here, we need to actually go ahead. You can see we're getting an error in here simply because we are creating a constructor that doesn't call it super. So it says, wait a minute, how are you going to create a copy of car, which is itself inheriting from vehicle without having any connection to vehicle at all? So you're not actually in basically you're not instantiating a vehicle simply because I mean, what is happening really here is that car is going to inherit the wheel count as well from vehicle. However, upon constructing an instance of car, we're not actually setting the wheel count. So can we actually fix it by saying wheel count is four? You'd see here that it says the implicitly invoked unnamed constructor, blah, blah, has required parameters. So what Dart is doing under the hood is that for this constructor is actually calling this constructor for you under the hood, but the wheel count is not present. Okay. So what you'd have to do in here and change that uh, calling of the super constructor by saying super manually in here and passing a manual wheel count to it. Okay. So you're basically overwriting, uh, you're changing the default implementation of what Dart is doing under the hood. So you're saying, I don't want you to call super with no parameters, I want you to call it with four. Okay. So you could also say here, you could say super wheel count. What happened here then? Hmm. So now what you're doing is that you're simply telling a uh, car that whoever tries to create an instance of this car has to also pass a wheel count, which then will be sent to the vehicles, uh, wheel count, uh, final property. Okay. So upon constructing car, the constructor of vehicle is going to be called and this thing is going to be passed to it. So this is kind of like kind of pointless, I would say in this case, because you're, you have a car subclass that doesn't really add anything to the implementation of vehicle. Okay. It's just an empty class. But if you have this, then you're actually adding functionality to a car saying that anyone creates an instance of car is going to have a wheel count of four. 
okay and we can also have an instance of a, so we can have a um, subclass of vehicle and let's just call it motorcycle or let's just call it bicycle and we could say in this case every bicycle always has two wheels all right so then we can go ahead and create uh, we could print we could say print uh, an instance of uh, what do we have we had car let's create a, an instance of car and an instance of bicycle like this and then we can print these to the console so if I run the application you can see now it says car with four wheels and bicycle with two wheels but wait a minute where did car have the ability to do this well we had this function in vehicle but car didn't have that function neither did bicycle and they're basically inheriting the two string functionality from their superclass in the exact same way that vehicle was inheriting two string from object so you don't have to tell dart which class oh sorry you don't have to tell dart which functions are inherited by subclasses subclasses by default inherit almost all functions unless i mean there are special functions but those special functions maybe we'll talk about later but normal functions that are written in a class are by default inherited by subclasses okay so this two string is coming now from vehicle if we if we change this uh, let's actually say uh, i wonder let's let's do something funny in here let's say in the two string function in here we say if uh, runtime type is uh, let's see expected to find all right we say in here if our runtime type is a is a vehicle then return this otherwise return super to string so and then we comment this line out let's run the application and see the results you can see vehicle is getting its uh, this line run and executed because the runtime type is actually vehicle but when it comes to printing an instance of car and bicycle since they've inherited this function right the two string function the runtime type is car and bicycle but the function implementation is coming from vehicle and in here we're saying is the runtime type vehicle nope it's not then return whatever object to string actually says so you can access your super class using the super keyword inside your classes okay so in here we're literally delegating the constructor sorry we're delegating the construction of the two string value to our super class which is object for the car and bicycle examples okay so what we could do is to since i think this is an actual useful uh, task or useful example i'm just going to leave it there but comment it out okay and then we can go back to this so that was for example three we just had a look at subclassing all right so we looked at what subclassing is and uh, super also we, we looked at and runtime type all right so we can close example three and create example four in here like this our main function and then let's go and run fs watch in here as well oops fs watch and get rid of the uh, terminal and start working on example four in this example i just wanted to show you quickly how your classes can also have getters we've seen examples of getters before but we haven't really worked too much with them just created a few examples and that was it however let me just show you in here how you can have a class uh, with different properties like a final uh, properties but you can also have a property that is get only so and it doesn't have to be initialized upon constructing an instance of your class i think this is a good example to see so let's say we have a person okay and let's have a final string name sorry first name and we create also last name i'm going to get my quick fix to create the constructor for me in here and i'm going to change it to a const and these two required named uh, parameters okay so let's say that every person by default has to also have a property called full name so we say final string full name this may be like a uh, something that you try you'd say okay well if it has a first name and last name uh, i want to add a full name what's wrong with this well what is wrong with that is that then you have to go and say everyone that passes first name and last name to your class also has to pass a full name what's the point of that it's as if i tell you here's two oranges and here's two apples and then I'd have to go and pass and I'd tell you, and I just gave you two oranges and two apples. You'd be like, but I knew that you also said it. You said two oranges and two apples to start with. You don't have to say 
I just gave you two oranges and two apples. I know that already. And this is the same thing with first name and last name. If you give me the first name and last name, I can deduct that the full name is first name and last name, right? So this is going to be a little bit then um, basically unnecessary. So if someone says foo, sorry, let's say const foo, then they'd have to say person, first name, foo, last name, bar, full name, foo bar. So this looks a little bit ridiculous, okay? So you'd say, okay, how do we fix that? Hmm, I'm gonna remove this, and then in the initializer list, I'm gonna say first, a full name is equal to first name and last name. And you'd be right, you could actually do that. You could go to the initializer list and fix that, and then you could remove the full name, and then you could say print foo.fullName. You can see it's actually a property that you can have access to and you can save it and the result is actually foo bar as you'd expect okay so this is one way of fixing it however this example was supposed to be about getters so this is one way of doing it so i'm actually going to comment it out for you like this let's comment this uh, class person like this copy it and then comment it so we have that as an example and then we go and create a, a copy of it here and let's just change this and then we want to have full name as a getter so let's say string and then we say get full name and you can in here then calculate the full name like this uh, exactly as we did in the constructor okay so what is the difference in here you can see our application still works we get the full name and it still says full bar so the caller didn't have to change anything it's just our implementation that changed so in here we have a getter and in here we had a constructor with an initializer list that was setting the full name to the value of first name and last so what's the difference in here well the difference is that in this instance, when we created uh, our person class, full name was calculated upon constructing an instance of person. And since first name and last name are final properties, they could never change since this is also a constant constructor. So once you create an instance of person, that instance could not change internally even. All right. So the full name in this case is calculated upon creating an instance of person, which is actually very good because since first name and last name can't be changed, full name can't be changed either or shouldn't be changed either. So this makes a lot of sense. All right create the full name upon constructing an instance of person. Now, the difference between this code and this code is that full name here is calculated every time you call this full name getter. Every time this full name is basically um, written like this, someone asks to read the value of full name, this thing is getting called this function. You can actually prove that by going in here and putting curly brackets, okay? And let's just say we return this value in here and just do a print full name and uh, name is called all right and then we could go in here and print this twice and have a look at our terminal you can see it says full name is called full name is called so it's actually called twice all right so it really depends i mean which one you want and which one fits your needs depends on how your class is constructed if the cat i would say one rule to follow is that if the calculation for this property is a heavy calculation put it perhaps in the constructor and by heavy i don't mean something that is going to take like many seconds to do but i just mean that well you're doing quite a lot of code to calculate this maybe we have a little loop maybe you have a little like a mapping of an array or something then it's better to actually do it in as the initializer list um if you can because sometimes function like what you're doing in an, in, an, in an initializer list is actually not allowed it's just too complicated for dart to figure out that it can be in an initializer list in that case well you have no uh, choice you have to have it as a getter but if you can have that inside the const constructor or your constructor initializer list it's best to do that okay in this particular case i would say i would prefer this example personally but i am going to leave it like this simply because it was just an example of how to create getters inside classes okay we're done with example four let's move to example five example five dot dart i can see i've created two files in here so this one is going to be used and let's change our fs watch to example five as well all right so in this in this example we're going to have a look at methods so what methods are and how they're used inside classes let's create a class car and we're going to have a speed in here and we're going to say by default is zero now you can see this is an interesting example because it's not a final property 
So if this is not a final property, then what is it? Well, we could say it is just a property because you could go in here and say final uh, my car is car and you could say my car dot speed is 20. And then later you could say my car dot speed is 30. So you can actually change it. But in the cases where we had final properties, then you couldn't change them. Like if you said final speed is zero, then you just literally creating a property of your class that can be read, but no one can set it. So this is not acceptable. All right. So what we created is just a property that can be both read and set. Okay. Or it can be, yeah, read and set, or it has a getter and setter basically. Okay. Now let's create a function or what is called also a method on this class. So this is what methods are simply functions that belong to the blueprint of that class. Then we create this function. We say it is a function called drive and it has one required name parameter and it's called uh, int speed. All right. So you have to pass the speed then in this function or in this method, we say, okay, by giving us a new speed, we say, or we change our speed to that speed. And then we say print uh, accelerating to speed kilometers per hour. Okay. Then you could also have a method called stop. So you have drive and then you'll have stop. In this case, we say speed is zero. And then we say stopping dot, dot, dot. And then we say print stopped like this. Okay. So these two are methods. So they're functions that draw uh, that, that are implemented at this class level. Okay. So you can't go and say car dot drive. That just won't work because this function is belonging to instances of this car. And that's what method is. A method belongs to an instance, meaning that you have to make so because this is the blueprint. Remember, you have to make a copy of this car in order to be able to call this function. So let's go back to our example. And here we say uh, final uh, let's like this final car. OK, so we create a copy of it and now we can say car drive and we say the speed is 20. All right. And then we say print uh, speed is dollar car dot speed like this. We print it to the console and we say car drive another drive with the speed of, let's say, 40. And then we say car dot stop. All right. So let's see the output. Then we can see it says accelerating to 20 kilometers an hour. Speed is 20 accelerating to 40 kilometers an hour, which is the result of calling this function. And then we call stop and says stopping and then stopped. All right. So these functions that you create on your classes, as long as they're not static functions, they're basically called methods. All right. So um, I actually think some people call it static methods as well if you have static functions, but we're going to talk about those later, perhaps. Okay. So just keep that in mind. Good. So we're done with example five talking about methods and we were going to create example six dot dart in here, main function. And, uh, and then we're going to start talking about setters and uh, we've talked about getters, but we haven't talked about setters. So let's talk about setters and also throwing. Okay. So I'm going to create a class in here uh, called car and let's go to our FS watch as well. And let's just say that we're having example six in here, get rid of that. And um, let's create a, a an example where we talk about setters. So what setters really are is that you will have uh, the, the ability to control when someone changes the value of your properties inside your classes. So in the previous example, when you saw it here, let's go to example five. I want to actually show you this because I think it's important in here. If someone goes and says car, that speed is minus one. That's also acceptable. Hmm. Actually, it's not acceptable. I would say it's accepted. Uh, it is not acceptable for a car to have maybe, maybe the speed of minus one. All right. So you could say you could reason that, oh, if it's minus one, maybe it means it's going backwards. It's reversing with at the at the speed of one kilometers an hour, an hour backwards. <laughs> you could you could reason like that. But I would say it's not an acceptable speed. OK, so we should say the speed is always uh, zero or upwards and then the direction could be forwards or backwards, something like that. OK, so in here we have no control over who sets this value and what values are acceptable. All right. And this is what we want to fix in this particular example. So let's actually change our implementation of class so that we say int speed is a private property. And this is indicated by this underscore in here. OK. 
then we say we will have a getter and setter for this speed the getter will simply return the speed but the setter will check the incoming speed if it's less than zero then it will throw an exception so let's go in here and say we have a getter which we call speed which simply returns the speed and then we'll have a setter and we say set speed and we get a new speed in here okay and then we say if the new speed is less than zero then we say throw exception speed cannot be negative like this and otherwise uh, else we say our private speed is equal to the new speed all right some people prefer to write it without else simply because after throw the code is not going to continue so after if the new speed is less than zero this will throw an exception and the program will stop right there it will never reach this point some people prefer to write it a little bit more explicitly using an else statement all right for me it doesn't really matter so let's just leave it like that okay so now we have a getter and setter with the setter enforcing a special rule in here okay now we can have our normal methods so let's go to example five in here and grab our uh, drive and stop in here so i'm going to paste them back in example six all right so in here we're saying this speed is equal to speed and when we say this speed you'd be probably not so surprised that it's calling our setter. It's not changing this uh, value. And the reason we're, uh, I mean, it's not directly changing this value. The reason we're doing this, you may be saying, but wait a minute, this is a drive function. It belongs to this class. Why is it not just going directly to this variable? And the reason behind this is that we have now a special rule that we want to be applied to this particular speed property or variable that it always has to be applied whether we change the variable or someone from the outside is changing the variable. And you can see in here, this speed is passed to our drive function. So the caller of this drive function could try to mess with us and pass a speed that is minus. Then we don't want to do something like this because this will then go around our logic for new speed. So by doing this, we're actually calling our setter as well, which will throw an exception should this incoming speed be less than zero. All right, and in here we're and and you'd actually be asking, but can we not do this? Hmm. If you say speed is equal to speed, you you can see all these instances are pointing to the same variable. The reason we're saying this speed is to differentiate the speed of the class, which is a property of this class, from this incoming value. All right. The more I look at speed as a word, the the more weird it looks to me. Is speed really written like this? Speed. Maybe, I don't know, it's probably, I've, I've been looking at it too much, but it's just looking more and more strange. It's one of these cases, maybe you've also had that, that sometimes when you look at one word too much, it looks strange. Like who came up with this word? <laughs> Anyways, so here also by saying speed is equal to zero, we're going to our setter. Okay, so we're not saying underscore speed, we're actually going to our setter in here. Okay, so let's give this a little spin and we're gonna create a const. Uh, do we have const? No, it can't be const because it has a variable property in here. Okay, so let's say final and we say car is an instance of car. Let's create a try and cache block in here because we know that we're probably gonna throw an exception. And let's go and say car, uh, sorry, car drive. And we say drive with the speed of 10. All right, and if you have a look at the results, it's say accelerating to 10 kilometers an hour. Let's now mess it up and say car drive with the speed of minus one and see what happens. You can see now we get an exception that says speed cannot be negative. Okay, so now we created a setter in our class that is actually applying some special logic to one of our properties. Okay, let's move to the next example. Let's go and say example seven, I believe, main function and FS watch the usual dance and like this boom boom let's keep that there so we can start working on example seven now in this example we're going to have a look at static properties and methods now up until this point whatever we've added to our classes have been like properties that could be inherited and they could whenever you created a copy or an instance of your class that instance got a copy of that property and what i mean by that is that if you say person and you say string um let's say actually we say uh, int sorry string name like a variable string and by default we say it's empty okay so i say in here final foo is a person and i say foo that name is foo 
Now I, I say final uh, bar is a person and bar's name is bar. Okay. Now if I print foo's name and then print bar's name, you can see that they don't actually affect each other. Foo has the name of foo and bar has the name of bar. So even though I'm setting the value of name, but it's not setting it in a central place. It's actually setting it on this copy. Okay. So remember that blueprint example again. So we actually made a copy of the original person. So any changes that we're making to our copy won't be affected here. Okay. However, as you remember, I said that there are cases that you can go and say anyone I can create a, basically a property in here that anyone who changes it, it will be affected in all copies of that class. Okay. How do we do that? And the, and the answer to that is using static properties and static functions. Okay. So let's go ahead in here and we say static string name and by default is empty. All right. So then you can see all of these are disappearing. It says, why? Well, wait a minute. This copy of food doesn't have name anymore. Well, that's right, because we said name is not at the copy level anymore. Name is at the person level now. So then you could say in here, okay, person dot name is foo. And then you could say print person name. And then you say person dot name is bad. And then you print the person name and you can see now it says foo and bad. So you're basically rewriting the value of this name property inside person. And this name is only created once for the entire person class and all like if you go ahead and in here and say I create a person instance you can't access that property because it's not at that level anymore okay so that's the power of static properties so let's create an example in here what we're going to do is just something really dumb that you shouldn't do but it but it kind of shows how static functions and static properties work so what we're going to do in here is to go ahead and say we have a class called car every time someone creates an instance of it we're going to keep that in mind and increment a counter so this class is going to know how many times it has been uh, created a copy of. Okay. So let's say class and we say car. Let's remove these examples from here. Okay. And then let's say that we want to keep hold of a variable that cannot be changed by, uh, by instances of this car. And it can't basically make be made a copy of. So we make it static. We say int and we say it's, pri it's a private property. And we say cars instantiated, something like this. So we say by default, we have zero instances of this car. Okay. Now we'll create a getter out of this private property. And we say static int get cars instantiated. And it returns this guy. Okay. And then we say static, then we have a static void function in here. Okay. And we say increment cars instantiated. And what we do is we just literally say this private property is going to be incremented like this. All right. Then we say final, every car has a name, let's just say, and then we create a constructor like this. Let's bring it here. Okay. And we say this is a required named uh, parameter like this. And in this uh, car constructor, we create a body for it. And we say increment the cars instantiated like this. All right. So let's have a look at what is happening here. So we have a, a static uh, property. So it is just created once per this entire class. And if you create 1000 instances of this car, this variable is just going to be one of that variable basically okay is not going to be per instance then we create a getter out of it as you can see in here so that the outside world can read this value and we indicate to the outside world that hey don't mess with this variable because it's private okay and also here we have a static void function that's called increment cars instantiated. and to be honest with you we could actually make this guy also private like this so we say that this is supposed to only be called from within this class all right. So now that we have these, let's go ahead and see how we can use these static properties and actually static property and static function. So we're going to go ahead and say print car cars instantiated. You can see we have this uh, getter, which is here, which by default should give us zero because we have not yet created an instance of car. So now we should get zero in here. Okay. So let's go ahead and create an instance of car and we say its name is my car. 
And you can see we're not actually using this car. We're just creating an instance, but we know that this calls the constructor, which in turn will call this function, which in turn increments the cars instantiated. All right. So let's put this print statement once more after this. Let me change the size of this as well. It's just ginormous. Okay. And also after that, we create another car. We say car, your car like this and we print the cars instantiated again. So you can see now in the terminal, we'll get the values of zero, one, and two, simply because in the beginning we hadn't created a car. So the cars instantiated was zero. The second one, we've created an instance of cars. The cars instantiated is gonna be incremented by one, and then another car is created or instantiated. So cars instantiated property is set to two, okay? So this was an example of how you can use static properties uh, to your advantage. Now, please also don't do something like this. I mean, it is, this was just to demonstrate how static properties, how static getters and static functions work, but there, I, I've never been in a case that I had to write code like this, that it keeps track of how many instances of, of a class have been created. Okay. So if you were doing something like this, chances are that you were doing something wrong. <laughs> okay. But this is, this is just to demonstrate how these things work. So let's close example seven and we waste no time. Let's go to example eight main function and FS watch in here like this. Good. So let's close that as well. Now in example eight, we're going to talk about factory constructors. Now factory constructors can create instances of their subclasses. A lot of people are a little bit confused about factory constructors and what difference is between those and normal constructors. A normal constructor of a class can only create an instance of that class in question. Okay. However, a factory constructor can create an instance of subclasses, which is the, its main power. Okay. So let's create a class in here and we say class vehicle and we create a const uh, vehicle constructor in here. Okay. Now let's go ahead and say class car extends a vehicle like this and we have a constant constructor for car and then we create a class and we say truck extends vehicle and a constant constructor for that as well okay now if i want to create a car now i should go ahead and say okay uh, final my car my car is car that's one way but if you want to go ahead and ask a vehicle to create a car for you as well you could have a factory constructor you could say factory and in case of vehicle dot and you could say well the name of the constructor should be car and this guy literally creates an instance of car okay however you can't just say well mm, vandot said that it creates instances of subclasses but maybe i could create instances of anything but that's not how it works so a factory constructor either it creates an instance of this vehicle or it creates an instance of one of its subclasses okay so since subclasses are car and truck you can create an instance of car or you could say truck no one knows but this is a bug because you're saying you're creating a car but you're creating a truck okay so let's copy this and then we say a hey, we have also a factory constructor that creates a truck which does create a truck like this and then we're going to go ahead and overwrite to string like this. And we're going to say, uh, like this, let me say vehicle of type, type runtime. Oops, runtime type like this. Okay. So now we can go ahead and say vehicle, vehicle dot car, you see, and we can also print this. So let's print this. And then we can say print vehicle truck which calls this factory constructor in here. And if you have a look at the results, you can see it says vehicle of type car and vehicle of type truck. So remember this, the point of this example is that factory constructors can create not only an instance of that class in question, but they can also create instances of its subclasses. Okay. And sometimes in some languages like Objective-C, this is actually called class clustering. Okay. So enough with example eight, let's go to example nine, dart main function like this and the usual dance of FS watch like that. All right, so let's keep that there. Now, uh, let's also talk about inheriting constructors. We've talked about this a little bit, but I just wanna touch point on it and, and just make sure that we really understand how inheriting constructors work, okay? Let's create an enum and we say role. And we say mom, dad, son, daughter, uh, and we say grandpa and grandma. All right, so just an enum with these values. Let's create a person and we say every person has a role, final role, and we say role. 
like this and we have a constant constructor with a name required name property uh, or parameter okay so every person has a role now you could go ahead and say okay but hmm, this is a little bit tiring i want to say that uh, i actually want to have a mom class that extends this person so let's say class mom extends person I mean, it is tiring to, for instance, if you want to create 10 instances of mom, then you'd have, sorry, 10 instances of this person where the person has the role of mom, then you'd have to say final mom one is a person and its role is a role uh, of mom, okay? And then you could have mom two and that does something like that. But wouldn't it be really good if you could just say mom one is equal to mom? So you create an instance of mom class, all right? Then let's do that. We create an instance, we create a class called mom and we say it extends person. However, we're not having any constructor in here. So let's say const mom, but wait a minute. How do we give it the role? How do we say that it has a role of mom? Well, you could say, mm, okay, so let's create an initializer list in here. And we say a role is role.mom. Does this work? Mm, it doesn't because we've already talked about this once just quickly that by default dart will under the hood call the constructor of your super class and we're missing this role then you could say okay actually let's pass super role in here okay let's see super the role const mom yeah actually that's not allowed either so we probably have to do it like uh required like this so but does this really help because it really, I don't think it does. Because if we go to here, we try to create mom, we still have to pass the role. And in here, we could make a mistake of saying dad. Okay. Just by saying that the constructor of mom has to accept the super's role, uh, we're not actually making anything better. What we want is just to be able to do this. So our constructor shouldn't have any parameters. Let's remove this. And what we need to do is just to call the super class uh, and its super constructor with the role of mom, like this. Okay, we create another class and we call it dad and its constructor is called dad and don't forget to change the role to dad. And let's go ahead and create instances, instances of these classes. So we say mom is mom and we say print mom role. And also we create a dad with the printing the dad role. So you can see in here, this is role mom and role dad. Okay, so this is how you can basically uh, inherit constructors and actually have your own constructors. Okay, and remember, in here now, if, if I say mom, if I try to create an instance of mom and pass the role and say role of mom, this isn't valid anymore because constructors are special functions that are not inherited by default. Okay, and I said this, I think a, a bit earlier during this chapter, I said all methods are inherited unless there are special methods. And this is one, one of the special methods that I meant. Even though person has a constructor in here, a constant constructor, it is not inherited by default to the mom class. And if we remove this, you can see you can't just leave it like this, okay? Because it has to have a constructor. So constructors are not uh, inherited by default, all right? Good, we're done with example nine as well. So we talked about uh, uh, constructors and inheriting them. Let's go to the last example. Oops, I just minimized my Visual Studio code. I don't know why. I think I wanna press Command N, but I press Command M, which does minimizing. So let's say example 10, main function, and let's go ahead into our terminal and say we do fswatch for example 10 here, okay? Now in example 10, we're gonna just uh, quickly touch base and have a look at abstract classes. Abstract classes are a little bit special uh, in that they are blueprints of a blueprint. <laughs> and by that, I mean, let's say that you are a, um, you are a you're creating like uh, blueprints of jet engines so you're kind of like a manufacturer actually you're not a manufacturer you're just like an r d like a research and development kind of uh, company that has a look at how to create uh, jet engines and then you go ahead and say okay here's a jet engine uh, i've created this is one blueprint and then you go ahead and create another blue blueprint and you'd be like hmm these two blueprints of two completely different jet engines have a lot of things in common like the fuel has to be this, the fuselage has to have a special, uh, uh, for instance, um, capacity. Uh, its uh, weight shouldn't exceed a special amount of weight, for instance. Uh, you could say the material always has to be this. 
Uh, so you could see some patterns in your blueprints. You could say both these blueprints that I've generated have a special pattern in them. So let's create a blueprint of my blueprint saying that from now on, any blueprint that I produce has to conform to this blueprint. Therefore, the material has to be this, blah, blah. So if you get a con contract or a consultant into your company and he or she starts cr producing a new blueprint saying that, oh, here's a new uh, jet engine that I'm developing, then you say, okay, let's compare it with the rules, the blueprints that we have created. Is the fuselage this big? Is the fuel this? Is the material this? And if all of those conform to your blueprint, then that person's blueprint will be accepted as a new blueprint uh, for, for a company so you can make copies of that so abstract classes are like the blueprint of blueprints okay so it's like that um, rule that all your classes that conform to that abstract class have to follow so let me show you an example so let's say we create an abstract class and we say vehicle all right and we say every vehicle has to have a vehicle kind all right so let's go ahead and create an enum in here we say enum vehicle kind and we say we can have cars trucks and motorcycle uh cycle is it like this yeah and we say bicycle like this all right so we have the vehicle kind and we say every vehicle has to have a property called vehicle kind all right so final vehicle kind and we say vehicle kind and in here you can see we say every vehicle has to have a constant constructor that is uh, taking the kind in like this all right then we say okay these are our requirements but we also are going to contribute to every abstract uh, sorry to every class that uh, uses us by giving it a void accelerate function that says print uh, print uh, dollar kind is accelerating and it will also have a decelerate void decelerate uh, like this so we say we expect a kind, but we contribute with two free functions for whoever implements us. Okay. Now let's go ahead and say, um, how can we actually use this uh, class? Now there are two ways of using abstract classes. One is by extending and, and the other one is by implementing. Extending works because uh, the vehicle class has default implementation for its methods and its kind property is not abstract. So let's go ahead in here and I'll show you what we're going to do in here. Let's create a class and we say class car extends vehicle. So what happens in here? We get an error. Let's just ask Visual Studio Code to create a little constructor for us. And you see now, now uh, Dart is happy. It says, okay, you're extending vehicle and I can see the vehicle requires kind and you're passing that kind in here and you're saying you're a car. So let's just remove this from here and we say we call our super and we say kind is vehicle, vehicle kind dot car. Now every, everyone's happy. You're extending an abstract class and the only thing that you had to pass to it was a property. Uh, of, of type kind or sorry of type vehicle kind name kind all right so this is how you can extend an abstract class and all of a sudden your car instance let's go ahead in here has a functions called accelerate and decelerate and also a kind property okay so you kind of like inherited these void uh, uh, functions or methods by extending your abstract class however you can also implement an abstract class and implementing an abstract class means to re-implement all of its abstract methods and properties as its, as its implements keywords name suggests. So by saying a class implements an abstract class, you're saying that, wait, I'm just literally going to re-implement everything that's in, in this abstract class. So let's go ahead and say class motorcycle cycle implements, uh, if I can spell, vehicle. All right, now we're getting a lot of errors in here. What's, what happened to this class? Uh, classes can only extend other classes. Uh, okay, I'm not sure why that is complaining. Uh, oh, implements. <laughs> All right, now if we get Visual Studio Code to fix these issues for us, you can see now it's creating three overrides for us in here. Okay, so what implements really did in here is that by implementing an abstract class you're literally saying that hey you know the blueprint of the blueprints of these jet engines 
I want to create a new blueprint of blueprints. What should I do? Then the person who created that super blueprint before says, okay, wait a minute. When I created this blueprint, a blueprint, I had to say what fuselage, fuselage we're using, what material, what material we're using, what uh, fuel we're using, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. If you want to create a new blueprint of blueprints, you have to do this and this and this. And that's exactly what Implement did. This was the blueprint of blueprints. Now you want to create a new blueprint of blueprints. Therefore, you need to do these things. Okay? So that's where extending and implementing are different from each other. Okay? Especially when it comes to abstract classes. So now you have the now you have to implement your accelerate function uh, from scratch. So let's say motorcycle cycle is accelerating. Then in the decelerate function, we go ahead and say, uh, oops, let's copy this part and we say print motorcycle is decelerating. And for the kind, uh, since you have to implement that as well, let's just return. We say kind is vehicle, vehicle kind dot motorcycle like this. Okay. So now that we have that, we can go ahead and test these things out. So we say um, in here, we say const car is a new instance of car. Okay, and I think actually uh, we didn't make the car constructed const, so let's make that const. So we have car, and we can create a, and we can actually print it to the console. So let's say print car, and you can see it says instance of car. Okay, and we could have actually overwritten to a string on car, but we didn't. Uh, and this car, we can say print car dot kind, and you can see it says car. Okay. And we could say car accelerate and car decelerate. That works without us having to uh, re-implement the accelerate and decelerate functions, which were in the abstract class of vehicle. Okay. And also you can then go ahead and create an instance of your motorcycle. Let's say final, uh, sorry, const motorcycle like this. It's a motorcycle. And I think we also forgot to have a const constructor for our motorcycle. Let's add that in here. We say const motorcycle like this, and then we can create an instance of it. And therefore, we can go also and say, uh, do the exact same thing. We print the motorcycle here, and then we say motorcycle accelerate and decelerate. Okay, so then we get these print statements to the console. All right, so I think it's very important that you now go, go ahead and practice with classes, create some abstract classes, and then go and extend them and implement them, add different properties and getters and setters and like even abstract uh, properties to your, uh, because you can go ahead in here and say abstract uh, int uh, string name or something like this. Okay, and then you see what happens if you create an abstract property on an abstract class, what happens? Okay, I think it's really good that you practice now because there's lots of like small edge cases and small things uh, that can be added to classes and then what happens to the subclasses, etc. that can't really all be explained in this video. Otherwise, this video is going to be a maybe four or five hours long. And since this is a crash course, I don't want to go into detail about everything. Otherwise, videos are going to be very long. So I think it's good now that you can go and practice with this information I've given you. And if you have any questions, do let me know either in the comment section or just by joining the Discord group at the link to which, uh, sorry, the Discord server, the link to which you can find in either the descriptions of this video or the descriptions of the Dart Crash Course playlist on YouTube. So uh, I hope that you enjoyed this chapter and I really hope to see you in the next one.